Hello, my name is John Russos, and this is a toast to my naivety. It's all brought to you by the Here's My Thing podcast. This is episode four of 10. Hot chocolate, fucking whipped cream. Enjoy. Oh my... Today I realized that I've been to the coffee S-H-O-P-P-E before. I don't know why it took, I don't know why it's taken this long. It's so weird. A, a few years ago, I was in the neighborhood. I was sifting through thrifted clothing one afternoon when I first walked into the shop. And I, but I remember back then, right as I walked in, almost immediately, I caught a couple of cruel cold gazes and this, it was a, it was a telekinetic message that was driven into my soul by some of the employees and patrons. And I remember it read something like, What's this guy in the Neff beanie and Peyton Manning jersey? And that's a Colts Peyton Manning jersey. Oh, that's a Reebok Colts Peyton Manning. That's actually pretty cool. What? I wonder, did he get that at Goodwill? What's this guy in this beanie and football jersey doing? Does he know there's a Buffalo Wild Wings by the airport? I think one of them had x-ray vision as well, and after scanning my entire person, each and every crack, crevice, and hole in my body, realized that I had no source of nicotine on me, so they scoffed and turned back to an article about the benefits of CBD. But things are a little different now. I come in peace and with a denim jacket, hoping the supplemental caffeine might help me blitz a few hundred coherent characters into my laptop. It, it seems that they dropped their degree of gatekeeping for each quirky button that I have pinned to my lapel. When I was younger, I would kill time at a local skate shop by kissing ass to the guys, to the employees behind the glass containers of wheels and bearings. These people could kickflip. They could kickflip and they would do their kickflips and then they would flip their dirty shirts inside out instead of doing laundry. They would wear beanies when temperatures flirted in the mid to upper 80s. There was such a high reason for me to want them to like me, for them to see me walking into their store and, and think to themselves, it's the kid with weirdly straight hair and clunky DVS shoes. Thank God. Or something like that. That's all I wanted. Now, while I very much doubt that this man behind the glass container of sugar dusted croissants and Dijon mustard pinwheels, the man with the mule tail goatee, while I so doubt that he can do a kickflip, let alone an ollie, I find a very similar desire to win him over. I, I guess I'm a people pleaser. No, I know I'm a pe- no, I am. Oh no, I'm very. Actually, I'm very. I know I'm a people pleaser. I'm. I'm the most people pleasing of. I'm the person who pleases the people who please people. Still, I. The other day, I, I made a very tired joke to him in hopes that I might get him to flex a smile, and really, a smile was the bare minimum. I. I hoped that I would get him to do one of those laughs where you just shoot air out of your nose and you raise your cheeks a bit. It was a windy day. It was a windy day, so much so that one of the tiny planted trees outside toppled over, toppled and, and separated from its brace. People walking in to the store, they were frazzled and people are already in the store. They had to hold down their belongings while others would swing the door open. I, I walked right up to the register and before hoping that he would assume my order, I said, oh my God. windy, <laughs> right? He shrugged and replied, we're overdue. While I waited for him to add something else, and, and for what it's worth, he could have added anything, he could have chastised the wind, or he could have said something so incredibly random that I would have been forced to try and track down his train of thought. I stood there and felt my face change to a deeper shade of red as if moving through different color swatches in the paint section at a Lowe's. I waited in the last hue for a very cold three seconds. I kept my eye contact. I did my best to maintain composure before dismissing it completely and moving on with my order. The entire interaction was a whole lot less awkward in my head. It was a whole lot less sad. But right as I opened my mouth, I realized how sorry I sounded. And maybe I was mad at myself for sinking so low to joke like that still. I hadn't wanted to yell at someone in public that bad in my entire life. We're overdue for wind. No, that's not how anything works. We're overdue for rain and snow and chiropractic adjustments. Library books, they're overdue. And, and there was this time where there's this thing called Blockbuster and VHS tapes for a while. They were overdue. 
And even if you are overdue for wind, Portland certainly isn't in the market for that. And sure, I've worn a windbreaker. It was one time. It was to shield myself from the rain, I swear. The whole exchange, it's just a bit annoying when I consider what happened yesterday. It was pouring out really hard, so hard that the pitter-patter on the windows, it actually shuffled the music selection inside, putting on Chet Baker for the afternoon. And it was pleasant. I was, I was actually making very good progress on this story about picking up a prescription from Walgreens when enter stage left stood a man who had either found pleasure in soaking in the downpour or had missed his bus and, and walked his way here. His shoes, they squeaked and coughed up water with each step towards the register. His jeans looked prune and his jacket, which was surely once a formidable opponent to any type of liquid, was now years past its prime, shaking hands with rain as a worthy adversary. He pulled off his hood and the man with the mule tail goatee asked him how he was doing, to which this figure replied, what? And after that, I thought the manager might burst a spleen the way he doubled over in laughter, not blowing anything out of his nose, not shaping a soft smile. He made noise, loud noise. I lost Chet's voice for a second. It was so loud. Who was this guy? Was he a priest? Was that it? Was the manager trying to get good and into heaven? No, wait, no. No, he couldn't have been a priest because priests, they're not allowed to have tattoos on their knuckles, right? Surely not tattoos that read across each finger, F-U-C-K, and then I-T with two exclamation points on the other. Where was this when I cracked the win? Did I have to tell him my ego could use a fluff? Do I need gauges to make him? Is that it? Do I need gaping holes in my earlobes to tickle him? It's disgusting. And so I sat there at the bar, watching their interaction like how a golden retriever named Lucky might look onto the attention a newborn baby gets from the rest of the family. The whole scene was perfectly infuriating until the wet figure finally ordered. Hot chocolate, fucking whipped cream. He said, not adding the word with, just stating them as two independent items. And the F-bomb, if, if an F-bomb has ever been used more magnificently, I would love to know. I don't think it has in the history of ever. He didn't have to bring it with him. I'm not complaining that he did. And I would have focused on this so much longer in the moment. But the idea... That this man with an obscenity tattooed on his knuckles braved a storm to get a $5.50 hot chocolate was just far too amusing. The manager himself looked puzzled. He wasn't kissing this figure's ass anymore. Instead, he was pursing his lips and zigzagging his brow like he had written the script for how this interaction was going to go. Like he had planned on this guy to order a triple espresso with demon spit mixed in or something like that. But then this guy took his own creative direction. He drew out a... Okay. Uh, okay. In reply, the wet figure pulled out a 10. He clinked a couple quarters into the tip jar, then waded off towards the side as the barista pulled out a vase of cocoa powder. It's a labelless vase. And part of me so hopes that they filled up with packs of Nestle hot chocolate, but because the vase looks like something that Seth Rogen might make, then post to Twitter, they think they can trick people into believing it's worth anything north of a dollar. I'm so foolish. I I didn't anticipate feeling lonely. And it's it's not that I thought I would not feel lonely. I just didn't think about it either way. I didn't think about it. I, I thought I would tuck into this project and then see myself as a tenant on some sort of bestsellers list in the spring. I hadn't considered emotions and the complexes that come with them. I don't know. It, it makes more sense the more I think about it. Not that I was great friends with my coworkers, but there's something to be said about the familiarity of it all, being around people who you know bits of information about, how many kids they have, what they eat for lunch, versus being around more complete strangers in big coats at some tiny store across town. Work really was most of my social life over the past year. It was work, then podcast. It was work, then podcast. That was my schedule, rinse and repeat. And then later for a bit, it was work and hang out with her then podcast. It was work, hang out with her, then podcast, but we don't talk anymore. And that's fine. Things got weird. They got too clear too fast. And so I jumped ship. And I hope I don't sound like I'm complaining, by the way. I'm, I'm more observing, I'm kind of speaking out loud right now. I put myself here. I quit the job. I broke that girl's heart and I chose to live alone in a tiny overpriced studio apartment. And maybe that was the biggest mistake. Not that I miss renting with my roommates, but there was comfort in not being alone all the time. A bit of comfort in hearing water run and, and silverware clink, even waiting on the shower. 
There was a sense of community before the apartment. The only community at my spot now, it's from the colonies of bacteria that collect on the unwashed dishes in my sink. I've seen my neighbors, but people don't really talk here. All I know about the other people in the building is what makes it through the few sheets of plaster and plywood. I know when they have sex. I know when they fire up their espresso machines, and I know what kind of, mis- um, I know what kind of music they listen to. But I don't know their names. And again, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm just a bit surprised to feel down like this. My general doctor says that I'm depressed. She said it might be seasonal, something common in this part of the country, but I had to tell her, maybe, because I love the weather here. I said that the weather's why I moved here, along with the show Portlandia, but I left that, I left that second part out. And also, hold on, wait, was she the one to give this type of diagnosis? I thought that if I'm to be told that I'm depressed, that's supposed to come from the mouth of someone in jeans or dress pants and a turtleneck sweater in a room with abstract art on the wall, not on a medical table by someone with a lab coat and and stethoscope hanging at their chest. Huh. Maybe she'd be listening to my podcast. I, I make sure to plug it each time I see her. She could be keeping tabs. I posted a darker episode recently. I, I pitched my voice down and everything. I downloaded Tinder again. I, do- I downloaded, I deleted, I downloaded. I, I, I freckle in use here and there. I'll go in spurts. I, I just matched with someone who has a tattoo of a rattlesnake sitting on a bed of roses on her stomach. <laughs>